Hi everyone and welcome to a new video on the CBI channel and actually a completely new series. In this series, we are going to be deploying a Django and React application on Render. And Render is a platform which can host cloud-based applications, both static websites such as React, but also complete web application built by Django or other frameworks. Now in this first video, we're going to be talking about the architecture of the deployment and the videos after we're going to make sure that our code is ready for the deployment and that we can actually deploy it on render. Now this first video is all about architecture and the way that we're going to be doing that. And we're going to be discussing four main topics. First, what is the application that we are deploying and where can you find it? Then what does the architecture of this deployment look like and how is that going to work? Third, what are the costs of this deployment and what are the general costs of hosting an application on render? And number four, what do we actually need to follow along with this video? So let's start with a rundown of what application we're actually going to be deploying. The application that we're going to deploy on render has Python Django as the backend and React.js in the frontend. And the backend code is completely isolated in the backend folder and the frontend code is completely isolated in the frontend folder. Now the React.js frontend has been set up with Vite, um, and you can see some more details of that right here. And the backend is built with Django, and I believe it is version 5.0. And let's actually confirm that. And when we stop our terminal and I look for the Django version, you can see that we're using version 5.0.6. And if I do Python dash dash version, you will see that we use Python 3.12.3. But this deployment will also work if you use another version of Python or another version of Django. Now in the front end, we can of course also see a few details here in our package.json. And most notably, we're using React version 18 and up. And I don't think there are any more specialities with this. We're also using Vite version 5.2.0, but other versions will probably also work just fine. And when we start our server on our local computer, you can see that our application in the front end displays different kinds of calendars. So we have nine different pages, each of which display a different version of the calendar. Now in the latest calendar, we are able to add events by giving it a title, giving it a status, and then also a date. And just like that, we can add different calendar items to our project. And we can also use filters to filter between dates or on specific statuses. Now let's also briefly touch upon our backend code. Now our backend code is fairly simple. We have an app called My Calendar in which we have created one model which stores different types of appointments. And those appointments are stored in a SQLite database. Now we expose this data to our front end through different view sets. So we've created a view set that allows us to list down the records, retrieve records, and to also create records. And this is all being serialized with an appointment serializer. Now in our serializer, uh, you can see there's just a basic model serializer, not too much going on, and it's exposed through a URL, which is just appointments. Uh, in this project, I use Django REST framework to make sure that this all works. But for the rest in the settings, you can see that, that nothing has really changed from the default. Everything is exactly as it was when I created the application, except for a few settings such as course allowed origins, which whitelists our front end. And also I added some things to our installed apps uh, because we've implemented that during the series. Now you can see also for our database that we're currently using a SQLite database. And this is also one of the things that we will be changing over the course of the next few videos. Now, one important thing, when we expose the data through the URL, the permissions are on allow any. So our endpoints will be freely available on the internet. And that is because our application actually doesn't have a login or authentication system. However, I will show you how you can create a user once this is deployed so that you can also follow along if you have login functionality inside of your app. And if we actually go to the URL of our backend, which is the localhost 8000, you can see that we have a very basic page which shows our API, which is appointments. And if we click on that, we see all of the data from our database. Uh, and this is also exactly the way that it will be looking 
when we deploy it. Now, if you're interested in knowing how I build all of these different versions of the calendar, I have a separate playlist on my channel, Django React Calendar, in which I have different videos describing how we've created these different pages and functionalities. You can also find the full code on my GitHub repository, and I will also include that link in the description. Now let's see what the architecture of this deployment is going to look like. Right now I have my project on my local computer in a folder. And what I already described is that the backend and the frontend is in a separate folder. In the next videos, we're going to make some changes to our backend and our frontend code to make sure that it is ready for the deployment. And once that is complete, we're going to push it to GitHub using Git. And GitHub is going to be serving as the online location where our code is stored and from where Render can pick it up to actually deploy it. Now, inside of Render, we're going to be creating three different services. First, we're going to be creating a PostgreSQL database because we can't use the SQLite database that we currently use in our local project. Then we are going to be hosting our backend code, so our Django project, uh, in something called a web service. And this is going to do all of the operations that our backend is doing, and is going to communicate as well with the PostgreSQL database. So we need to make sure that those can actually talk to each other as well. Now our React code is going to be stored in a static site because it can just be a static location that serves different files. And we of course are going to let our backend know that the static site can actually communicate with our Django project to make sure that everything works exactly the way that we expect. Now, since our backend and our frontend are going to be deployed separately, we're also going to create two separate GitHub repositories in which we can store the different contents. But that will all become more clear in the next videos. Now, as mentioned, we're going to be deploying it on Render. And as advertised, Render is a very fast way to put your application in production. And I must say, I was actually quite impressed with how easy it is to navigate Render and to actually deploy the application. Uh, in my opinion, it was much more easy than doing it on Azure or doing it on Heroku. So I would really recommend uh, trying this one especially because we can get started and do our deployment for free. Because if we go to pricing, you can see that there are a few different pricing plans that you can use, um, each with different pros and cons. Now, the great thing here is that they have a pricing tier, which is actually completely free. Uh, and that's really beneficial because that gives us the freedom to just start and try out a deployment. And that is exactly what we're going to be doing in this series. So you can follow along for completely free. And later on, if it turns out that it isn't for you or that it's not what you want, then you can always find something else. Also, when I did this, I didn't need to provide any sort of payment information. So you can just create an account and there's no strings attached at all. So that's really nice. And even the other plans aren't that expensive if you compare it to some of its competitors. And believe it or not, this isn't even an ad. This is just my honest opinion. Now, one thing that I do need to mention about this is when you use a free plan, there are some limitations for your database. Your database will be deleted after 30 days. So you can only have it free for a limited time. So it's only feasible as a proof of concept and to see if you like it, but it's not a solution that you can keep on using. Also, I believe your database service will be deleted if it has been idle for a very, very long time. So if it's not being used across several days, uh, so keep that in mind as well. Let's now discuss what you actually need to follow along with this video. Well, the first thing you need is an actual project. So you can follow along with my project that I've just shown on the GitHub repository or your own Django and React project. That's completely fine as well. Next to that, we're going to be using GitHub to host the code online. GitHub is completely free and you can also create an account for free. So uh, yeah, you can just go there and it should be completely fine. Same for Git. Git is going to be used to make sure that we can push the code from our local computer to GitHub. And also Git is completely open source and free, so no worries there. For the render part, it is actually the same story. You can follow along completely for free and there's no need to provide any credit card details. So you can just follow along as we go. So actually there are no real costs associated with this deployment. Now, that is all what I wanted to share with you today on the architecture of the deployment. In the next few videos, we're going to start with the deployment of our backend code. 
And that means that we're going to be changing our Django backend code for the deployment. We're going to be pushing our Django code to GitHub using Git, and then deploy the Django services to render. Uh, those are, will be three separate videos because deploying the Django code is a little bit more complex than deploying the React.js code. So for React.js, we will do it in the fifth video and we'll do all of the steps in one video. Then as a last separate item, I'm going to discuss troubleshooting and uh, let you know what are the different things that you can do if it isn't going your way. I hope you've enjoyed this video and look forward to the series. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.